The company needs a customer strategy for people to know exactly how to do the right things for the right customers at the right time. Here are some factors that can be a part of a customer strategy. Customer types, core business and secondary business, product service development, segmentation, great customer experiences, customer channels and important customer touch points, sales and service mindset and behavior, prices and earnings on different customer types, investments and return on investments, service levels, management mindset and behavior, recruitment and setting the right team, training employees and managers, follow-up routines, customer satisfaction index. Customer types. Group the customers into different categories based on their behavior as customers. What are their expectations and needs when buying and using? How do they evaluate whether they perceive that they have gotten value for money? Core business and secondary business. What is the company mainly all about and what other kind of business do the company do that adds to the financial result? In this example, the core business is renting out apartment and secondary business can be excursions, buses, car and bike rental, grocery store and more. More and more companies outsource what used to be core business. A cost-benefit calculation can show whether it's profitable to outsource or not. Some calculations are short-term calculations with a break-even that shows when the investment is paid by the savings. Many companies discover after a while that break-even is not as expected. Imagine a company outsourcing IT and transferring most of the staff to the new partner. Expectations from employees are that the service level is the same even though internal procurement has agreed upon a lower one to decrease cost. Expectations are also that the transferred staff will just start working fully engaged from day one in the new company. This seldom happens and it is rarely seen that the calculations include lack of productivity derived from employees and managers' frustration regarding the lower service level. Product development what are the customers willing to pay for in the future? That is the question in product development. Any company has to deliver product launches at the time when the customers are willing to buy and in the quantity and with a price tag that makes it a good business for the company. Consider what kind of products the customers do not know about and haven't considered buying simply because they can't imagine it. When Apple launched their first iPhone, everyone was surprised of this new way of communicating. It was a revolution. Product development is evident in that line of business. If you cannot invent something new, you are not on the market anymore. Competition is all about innovation and people rather buy the new products than the old ones. And an old product is probably not a year old. The company Novo Nordisk is a global healthcare company with close to 100 years of innovation and leadership in diabetes care. This company works with think tanks researching for decades to discover, develop and implement a new product on the market. It is all about hard work and about being lucky too. In this line of business, it seems like luck follows the focused and hard working. Segmentation. Group the customers into different segments that clearly show which customers are more valuable to the company than others. The ones you earn most money on or who are the best ambassadors for the company should be offered the greatest customer experience. Great customer experiences. Only the customer knows if they've had a great experience or not. You can guess or you can ask the customer, what is a great experience for you? The more salesman or service officer get to know the customer, the better he or she can deliver a great customer experience. In some sales and service situations, there are not much time between meeting the customer and delivering. In that case, it's a matter of whether the salesman or service officer has prepared ahead by training different sales and service situations with different customer types. Some people claim that they can read the customer's desire, and there can be some truth in that, if the person has years of training in sales and service situations. Training most often increases the chances of choosing the right behavior to fit each of the customers. The old saying, treat people differently to treat people equal, goes for sales and service too. Customer channels and important customer touch points. A customer meets the company in different ways and through different channels. A channel can, for instance, be a physical contact, 
a phone call, a web meeting, an email, an SMS, MMS, a commercial, meeting an ambassador, the company's internet site, social networking, a YouTube video, or any other new creative way of meeting the customers with the company message. The important customer touch points are the touch points that create a movement, either to close a deal, move a customer closer to a sale, creating satisfaction and loyalty, or avoid customers leaving. Sales and Service Mindset and Behavior The right team can support the strategy. It is often heard that the only constant is changes, and there is a lot of truth in that. Another saying is, people are the company's most important asset. When combining people and changes, we move into what sales and service has been, is and will be. Service and sales mindset has to be in sync with what the customers expect and dreams it to be, and that changes over time. Once upon a time, a shoe seller could sell from door to door. That doesn't happen anymore. Now a shoe seller is either in a shop or meeting the customers on the internet. In a shop, you can have a personal impact on people and move customers closer to a sale or further away. But how do you communicate on the internet in a personal way and get people to buy? Find out by understanding what kind of mindset and behavior the customers expect the sales and service force to have. Prices and earnings on different customer types. There's a simple rule saying, the ones who buy the most is the ones who will get the cheapest prices. Well, that depends on a lot of things. Imagine that someone would not buy if it was too cheap. They might consider the quality to be low. Imagine that a small customer gets other people to buy by being an ambassador. What is that worth to the company? There's no simple prescription for how to differentiate prices. It is all a trial and error process, believing in what you do and following the customer's pattern. Since a crystal ball could come in handy and isn't there, a best guess is a good starting point. The more experienced the company is at following their prices connected to earnings, the better the company becomes at it. Investments and return on investments. There are a lot of investments to do when it comes to customers. Everything that the company is doing has to link to great customer experiences. Everything that doesn't should be removed, unless the company cannot due to legislation issues. Production, service, sales, distribution, transportation, internal support functions and more. All of what has to lead to the customer's experience. Find out what is the single most important thing to invest in to increase the customer satisfaction and business result. Calculate the investment and expected return on investment. Imagine a tangible investment like a machine able to produce 25% faster than the machine it should replace. Given that the product gets to be delivered earlier to the customer, ask the customers how much more satisfied they will be and what that means for how much the company will sell both now and in the future. Imagine then that you want to do an intangible investment like getting the employees to be even more service-minded. How can you measure your return on investment on that? Measuring people's change in mindset and behavior is mostly calculated based on experiences. Managers who have been a part of cultural changes several times before can of course make a better guess than other managers. External consultants can sometimes be good advisors too when guessing on the return on investment compared to the change process decided. Service levels. Based on customer demands and calculations on expected return on investment, the company can decide what kind of service levels they want to offer and to which types of customers. Is the service level dependent on how much a customer buys? A bakery normally has the same business hours for everyone. Or is it possible to get access to the store earlier or later than others or get a special delivery if you are a frequent customer buying more than the most people? Do you get discounts or premiums like a cake for free for every 10 cakes you buy? Can you pay per month instead of every time you order? Can you return the cake if you don't like it? How much time are you allowed to spend serving each of the customers? Tell the story about why each service level is as it is, what the employees are supposed to do, how to do it, when and where. Or even better, involve the employees in answering the why, what, how, when and where. Describe the service level so everyone knows what is agreed upon, both now and later on. Decisions are forgotten, if not written. 
management mindset and behavior. Given that the company wants a certain kind of employees to offer a certain kind of service, sales, production, and more, to deliver great customer experiences, it is important to decide upon what kind of management is needed. Find out what mindset and behavior the different managers must have to be able to lead and manage these certain kind of people, delivering great customer experiences. Recruitment of managers and handling talent management with the customer experience and focus becomes important. Changes in how to deliver great customer experiences affects the choice of managers if changes in mindset and behavior are needed. This also affects the managers leading managers. They have to change too. Recruitment and setting the right team. When the company knows what kind of mindset and behavior is expected of managers and employees, it is time to set the right team. Developing and recruiting the right people is evident to make the strategy happen. It is about skills, competences, working methods, performance, personal values and passion for the job. Training employees and managers. If a certain kind of mindset and behavior is expected from employees and managers, training is needed in daily operations. Inspire continuous improvements by being a role model yourself and giving people feedback on their performance every day. Train yourself so that you keep yourself relevant at all times. Athletes train every day on the same things to hold on to their skills. If they don't train continuously, they will lose their competitive edge. If they change the way they do things, they will train even harder on it to get it right. Do the same as the athletes. Train what you are supposed to do every day to keep your skills at a high level and train even harder when changes occur. Allow yourself to fail and learn from failures. Trial and error will lead you to excellence. Follow-up routines. Great managers follow up on customer satisfaction and especially what the most important customers' opinions are both the present and the future customers. Customer dreams and future needs. What do we know already? What can and will we investigate in and how do we do that? Product innovation. Are we one step ahead of the future? Competition. What are the competitors doing that we should do too? And maybe different and more? Segmentation. Do people spend the time in the right way with the right customers? Service skills and delivered service. What do people know, what do they do, and how can they become even better? Sales skills and delivered sales. What do people know, what do they do, and how can they become even better? Management skills and actions. Managers leading managers are following up on what the managers and leaders' competences are and how their intention and behavior supports people working in sales, service, production, and support units. How can they become even better managers and leaders? Customer Satisfaction Index Measure the customer satisfaction by asking the customers questions. The output can be anything from a satisfaction percentage to concrete suggestions for what to hold on to and how to become even better. The more the company wants to know, the more expensive it often gets. There are many ways of measuring customer satisfaction. For instance, firm analysis comparing strength and improvement areas to those of competitors. Firm analysis questioning a certain percentage of the company's customers. Voice response analysis from the customers calling in. One-touch opinions like press green, amber or red button. Personal email directing customers to a questionnaire on the internet. Asking non-customers for what it would take for them to want to be a customer. It is not every question the customer can answer. The company's employees can answer questions as well. These questions have to do with the internal processes and relationships and how these could be even better. These questions are often found in an employee satisfaction index where employees and managers are to rate certain statements on a scale from 1 to 10. Questions related to internal processes and relationships can for instance be In our team we are most occupied with the customer's dreams and needs. We are interacting with other units to create the best customer experience. We are measured on our ability to create great customer experiences. We are appreciated for directing time and focus to our most important customers. My manager has the customer in focus in whatever he or she does. We continuously improve our processes with the customer experiences in mind. 
Measuring customer satisfaction doesn't have to be that expensive and hard to do. Sometimes it's just about asking the customer when they're in the company anyway. What do you think? For instance, we are very eager to make our shop the most appealing showroom for you and we would love to hear your opinion of what works for us and what we can improve. Would you like to share your opinion with us? If the answer is yes, the questions can begin, for instance, what is your general impression? What do you like the most? If we should make it even better, what should we do? The questions can be even more personal, for instance, I would like to be even better as an advisor for you, and I need your opinion about what I do well and what I can improve in the future. Is it alright if I ask you questions about my performance? If the answer is yes, the questions can begin. For instance, what is it that I do well and should continue doing? Why is it important for you that I do that? If I should be even better as an advisor, what should I then do more or less of? What would that mean for you given that I succeed? You will find some of the different aspects mentioned here in a more in-depth version in other parts of this leadership path. Back to the example with the Greek hotel that you found in the previous topic, differentiated customer focus in this leadership path. Imagine that the company has investigated in the segmentation and possible prices, earnings and products to deliver. They have also made their decisions upon which customers to focus on and in which way. Let's look again at the points in the analysis ahead of writing the customer strategy. Customer types. We know which customer types are present and potential. Core business and secondary business. We know that core business is renting out apartments and secondary can be transportation, tours, food, etc. Product service development. The owners and employees have to continuously discuss which products and services to keep what to refine and how to surprise the customers with new opportunities. Segmentation. We know that the company can make decisions on how to prioritize their customers in different segments and with different customer sales and services. Great customer experiences. The employees should get involved in finding out and deciding upon what a great customer experience is. They have the surveys from the travel agency to lean upon and they can ask the customers for what is more important. Customer channels and important customer touch points. The hotel cannot control the service level at the travel agency, but they can control how user-friendly and selling their own internet site is, how service and sales behavior is when the customer is calling, and how the sales and service behavior is when the customer is at the hotel. At the hotel, the important customer touch points are the employees at the reception, the bar, the employees cleaning, and the different craftsmen entering. Their behavior and ability to be an integrated part of the customer's happy moments will be visible in the satisfaction measurements and have a direct impact on the customer's choice of hotel the coming years. Sales and service mindset and behavior. Once the owners and employees know the service level, they can discuss what kind of mindset and behavior is needed. Passionate employees will have a lot of ideas for what great mindset and behavior is. Sales mindset can, for instance, be Asking the customer, if you consider to visit us again next year, which month will we then see you? Which room would you like, given that you decide to visit us? Service mindset can be, now that you have decided to come back next year, which room should I reserve for you? If you don't want to walk up the stairs to get your towel, I can lend you one from the hotel. If you don't know where to go today, I can really recommend you to. I can see that your son is unhappy. Can I disturb him by offering him to make his own fruit cocktail behind the bar? Prices and earnings on different customer types. We know that the company can decide upon prices and earnings and also that they have to investigate over time how their price structure is going to be. Investments and return on investments. We know that the company has not yet decided upon how to invest in VIP apartments and conference facilities. Service levels. The owners and employees must investigate and decide upon the service level they want to offer to each of their segments. Management mindset and behavior. 
The owners have to decide upon what kind of mindset and behavior they expect the managers to have to be able to lead and manage people with the sales and service mindset and behavior they are looking for in the hotel. They can take advantage of the many studies and surveys that has been done to find out which management mindset and behavior is needed. They can also take contact to a similar hotel with a great customer experience to get inspiration from them. Recruitment and setting the right team. We know that the hotel has been up and running for one season at this point. It is time to walk through the staff to see if the right team is set. Questions to ask are, for instance, who are the stars and are they in the right positions? Who needs to be developed and for which positions? Who is not passionate or skilled enough to do the job and will they ever be? Who will not be offered a job next season? Who has to be recruited? How is the salary level? What are the employee benefits? Who has to be trained and for what? Training employees and managers. Once the right team is set, it is time to consider how people are to be trained and in what. People can be trained in physics, meaning doing their daily work but faster and with higher quality. Techniques, meaning how to do a certain task. Tactics, meaning how to interact in relationships with different kind of customers, understanding different kind of mindset and behavior. Mental, meaning understand own strengths, intention and mindset. Take care of your body and mind, meaning how to stay focused and energized by taking care of own nutrition, physical condition, restitution and reflection. Learn more about developing people by entering the leadership path, lead and manage development. Follow up routines. The owners should consider how to follow up on managers and employees. Some of the opportunities are budget meetings, setting goals and creating new ideas for how to reach the goals monthly development meetings with every individual, seeing people in action and giving feedback, sharing successes with great customer experiences. Enter the leadership path, lead and manage performance to learn more about these meeting types. Customer satisfaction index. We know that the company has many opportunities for getting to know the customer satisfaction. The only one used at the moment is the satisfaction ratings the hotel gets from the travel agencies. Thank you.